It's always difficult to know the exact steps for learning a new technology. There are plenty of possible paths, but few are really optimized. So the risk of losing time is really high. Courses on YouTube become outdated quickly because the technology is changing rapidly. So in the worst case, you are learning from outdated content. In this video, I will present you my roadmap to become an Angular developer in 2024 in the most efficient way possible, whether you're a student or a developer seeking to change technology. Most importantly, you will know exactly what to learn because the latest versions of Angular have changed a lot. I will guide you through the important things that you need to know in order for you to be ready to build real-world web application, as well as use the latest framework feature. Angular is not really popular on social network because seen as too rigid for some. But it remains a very good choice to quickly find a job as a developer because the demand is still very high, as you can see in this graph. Angular still remains very strong because it ranks at the second place directly behind React. So that's definitely a solid choice in 2024. If you're already a web developer and that you know the basics, you can skip directly this part because I will talk about the prerequisite to be able to learn Angular in a good condition. To start your Angular journey, you will need to know how to use HTML. Because its fundamental building block of web page, its structure, its content on the web, and it's crucial to build website. Understanding HTML is necessary to grasp how a web page is organized and displayed. Next, you will need to learn CSS, which stands for Cascading Style Sheets. It's designed to enhance the content of your HTML. With the CSS, you can control the layout, the color and fonts, and other visual aspects of your web page enabling you to create a really appealing website. For me, the most two important things that you will need to know in CSS will be flex and grid, because with these two, you will be able to structure your page and component quickly and efficiently. Also, you will definitely need some knowledge about a CSS framework, which can be Bootstrap, Tailwind, etc. Like this, you will be able to make your UI responsive and make use of their high-level component. The core language that you will use daily with Angular will be TypeScript. Since TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript, it's essential that you know JavaScript first. The best approach will be to start with JavaScript, and once you're okay with it, switch to TypeScript. This way, you will be ready to have a solid understanding of Angular. For JavaScript, you will need to dig into several topics, such as variable, data types, operator and expression, control structure, function and scope, and so on. For TypeScript, you will first need to take an object-oriented programming class. Like this, you will have some theoretical knowledge who will help you to understand TypeScript concept faster. Version control tools like Git are very important. They allow you to work in a team or in some personal project efficiently. Knowing Git is a must for programmer, so you should take the time to understand how it works and how to use it. To manage JavaScript dependencies, you will need to know what Node.js and NPM are. For Node.js, just read some theory, it would be enough. The important stuff here is NPM. You need to know how to use it and what it is, because you will basically use it daily with Angular. For me, the last prerequisite will be to understand the solid principle. Those principles are about writing clean and understandable code. There are two letters who are very important to understand for Angular. First, the S, which stands for single responsibility principle, and the D for the dependency inversion principle. Basically, if you understand these two, you will quickly understand how Angular works internally later. For Angular, you will first start by understanding what ng modules are and how to use them. ng module will progressively disappear because standalone components are now stable, but it's still a relevant topic because the code base that you will work on on your next job will probably still use ng module and you will not use the standalone component yet. That's why it's still an important topic to navigate. After this, you will see what a component is and that they are divided in two parts, the controller and the template. The controller holds the logic and the UI holds everything that is displayed to the user. It's a big part with many topics, especially for the template side. 
You will also learn how to write conditional statement to display or hide UI components and how to transform data coming from external sources such as API. Components have also their life cycle. That's something very important to know because like this you will be able to understand what's going on and debug your code efficiently. Signal is a part of the new and exciting feature of Angular. Keep in mind that it's a work that is not done yet inside the framework but it's okay to dig into it already because that's part of the new strategy of the framework for the next coming years. First, you will need to see the theory and what you can do with it so far, such as signal input and output, all the mutating effect, updating signal with set and mutate, and querying the signal with effect and computed. Service are the second most important things in Angular. They will help you to carry business logic and state if needed. This is where your knowledge about solid principle will come into play because service rely heavily on dependency inversion principle. So you will need to learn how to inject service and how to use the Angular injector. With services comes RxJS. I prefer to tell you right away that's a tough topic, especially if you're starting programming now. To make things easier, you can study the observer pattern and then begin with observable and subjects. This way, you will have the basics of RxJS. Then you can start learning about how to subscribe and how to notify observers. After that, you can study operators like map, filter, switch map, etc. Like this, you will know how to transform data inside your pipe. Keep in mind that there is a lot of different operators and that you don't need to know all of them. Just take the usual ones and it will be enough. So far, you did the hardest part. So now you can start learning about the HTTP client. You will use it to fetch some data from external sources. And we do that in that order because HTTP client use RxJS heavily. So you will be equipped to understand and use it properly. To finish with services, you will need to explore interceptors, what they are and why they are very handy. A common use case for interceptor is to inject an authentication token inside every request. All right, now that you know Angular services, let's talk about forms. There are two types of form, reactive and template driven. In any case, you need to know about these two types because their usage depend on the use case. If you have a simple form, then you will use a template driven form. And if you have a more complex or dynamic form, you will prefer to use the reactive one. You will reuse without doubt your knowledge on RxJS because some form feature are using it. After the forms, it's time to understand how the Angular router is working and how you can bind components with URL. With that will come the concept of lazy loading, which allow you to split and load your code only when it's necessary. Then you will see how to protect a URL with a guard to make sure a user doesn't access a page that is not allowed to. After that, you can check child route, which allow you to nest a component with URL segment. Standalone component on our stable, so that's a good time to learn about them. It's a way to get rid of modules, which means that standalone component doesn't need to be imported into any modules. It will simplify the development workflow and also stop confusing everyone because module management is a pain. You will need to see how to configure your application as well as your component to be able to import route, lazy load, import your module, etc. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, you can subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. It's helping me a lot. Thanks. Testing is mainly divided in two different categories, unique testing and end-to-end -end testing. For unique testing, you will need to learn how to test component and services. It's a bit different because they have different purposes. Services are more centered around business logic and components are more centered around displaying data and reacting to user actions. You will also explore how to use Karma, which is the library that Angular use to run unit tests. Karma is maintained by the Angular team and it seems that at some point they will replace it by another tool that we don't know yet, but in any case, it will be almost transparent for us. At some point, you will encounter the need to mock part of your code, like the HTTP 
FTP client in order to avoid to make the real calls. So make sure to understand what it means and how to do it. You will also need to know Jasmine, which is a framework to write testing code. Remember that this technology is generic and you can reuse it with any JavaScript code. So later, if you change framework, you will still be able to write your test with Jasmine. With these two tools, you will be able to validate that the logic of your component and services will work no matter the change that you are doing to your code. To make your testing knowledge complete, Cypress will come next. It's a framework to write end-to-end -end tests. Like this, you will be able to validate the behavior of your apps as if a user was really using it. The idea here will be to create some scenarios where you will say to Cypress which action he should perform. For example, click on this form, then click on this button, then type A, B, C, D, on this input, etc. Zone.js is the piece that works in the shadow and that makes Angular react when necessary to update the DOM or trigger more event. Some work is in progress within the Angular team to get rid of Zone.js. Zone.js is not optimal to update the application for several reasons. And by the way, Signal is one of the parts to start getting rid of Zone.js. But you still need to understand how it works, why it's there, and what you can do with it in case you run into some issues. It's now time to choose a UI library and play with it. There is plenty of them like ng bootstrap, angular material, prime ng, etc. So choose the one you like. It will validate your knowledge of component and services. You can even make small apps to make sure you understand everything that you learn up to this point. You should be able for now to make coding project with Angular. However, if you want to go beyond and learn more advanced stuff, here is a bunch of topics that you can work on. First, you can dig more on RxJS. Try to build an autocomplete, manage state inside a service, or cache an HTTP query. These three topics will force you to go more in depth in RxJS. There are two main ways to handle internationalization in Angular. You can use the default i18n library that is by default in Angular or an external libraries, which is called ngx translate. Both have their pros and cons. The default i18n libraries has better performance, but is less dev friendly, whereas the ngx translate is slower, but it's more usable on the developer side. In any case, I will advise you to know both. Like this, no matter the project that you work on, you will be ready to handle it no matter what. NJRX is a state management library that helps you to create highly reactive apps. To begin with, you can start by learning about the Redux pattern to learn NGRX quickly. After this, you can have a look at Action, Reducer, Selector, and Effect, which are the building blocks of NGRX. Then you can explore Development Tool, NGRX Entity, and Data in order to be faster and write less code. Remember that is a very advanced topic and that you need to have very good foundation before beginning to learn NGRX. With Angular, you have some different change detection strategy. And of course, depending on the one that you choose, you will have some trade-off. It's nice to know between them because you will be able to choose wisely and that's what will make you an expert later. Another advanced topic is SSR, the server-side rendering, or SSG, the static site generation. The idea of SSR is to render your page or component on the server. Like this, you will be able to have nice SEOs as well as avoiding performance hit on the old device of your users. SSG is a bit different than SSR because it will generate the page at compile time and not per request. Last but not least, you can have a look at hydration, which is a technique coupled with SSR that enhances the performance of it by avoiding to do extra work than necessary. Like, for example, avoiding to recreate DOM nodes. The idea is to be faster to render a page and avoid calling the server if it's not necessary. For both of these techniques, I would advise you to play with it and learn how it works. Like this, you will be ready if you need to use it on a real project. All right, I hope this video was useful for you. 
I will put the roadmap document in the description. Like this, you can come back at it anytime and track your progress. If you have any question, don't hesitate to reach out in the comment section. If you like this video, you can subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. It will help me a lot. Thanks and I will see you in the next one.